I'm just a working guy. I'm just a guy who shows up on set. I do the work. I've got a pretty big, wild imagination. Uh, I look at my script. I look my castmates in the eye. I support my crew, make sure everybody's fed, and just show up and do the work. When you're a younger actor, you think about awards. You think about your face on a movie screen. You think about your face in thousands and millions of homes, uh, people watching your work. And then you get a job, literally a job, a job reading lines. And like I said, wearing makeup and you're showing up and you're playing maybe a part that isn't quite what you dreamt of, but it's a job and you get to pay your bills and you get to maybe take a vacation do something good for your parents or your family. And then those jobs start to stack up and you realize that the work that's coming in is actually more in tune, more in line with what you want to be doing, the kinds of roles you want to be playing, good or bad, um, good character, bad character, good guy, bad guy, and uh, antagonist, protagonist. You're kind of seeing these characters that are coming in and slowly what happens, you're creative vision starts to evolve and you get out of the dream state of dreaming about your career and then you get beyond just having a job and then you get into a place where you understand that what you're going to do is going to have an impact on someone's viewing of your work negatively or positively and you start to understand that the work that you're doing as an actor with a group of actors with a group of writers and production crew and all of that is going to be impactful and it's going to mean something to someone it puts an importance on the work and i think it's something that's kind of magical and when you or at least when i've been able to recognize where i started where i began where i was in the middle and here i am 26 years in front of the camera feeling like i just stepped foot off of the starting starting line of a marathon I realized that I've been a part of a lot of good things that have made a difference to people's individual lives or collective lives, but I'm not done yet. I'm just kind of starting. You and mom had three. No help, just the two of you. How'd you manage? Oh, that was easy. You kids and your mom. That was all I ever wanted. It was easy to do it when you... When you look at it like that. I love that he had a golden heart. He was a guy who in the beginning, you know, we didn't see any of the mess that he grew up with or that he was involved in when he was younger. We just saw a guy and his pregnant wife excited for his babies and making sure that they were gonna bring three babies home from the hospital. It was that golden heart that I think carried me through his darker times. I used to have this photo in my trailer of myself and my dad when I was a little boy. And taped above it, I had a sign that said, be a good father, be a good husband. Two simple things. So if I were to have a hard time connecting to the words, which didn't happen at all on the show because we've got wonderful writers, and they churn out wonderful scripts. Um, or if I was having a hard time connecting to a scene, which never happened because Mandy Moore has been there with me, completely present in every way. I could always go back to my trailer, to that photo of my dad and I, and that little note that I wrote saying, be a good father, be a good husband. And that would be my touchstone. I can't believe you beat me to saying I love you. Well, you better believe it. I come alone. I love you. The first time we ever met, ever met in life, was an audition chemistry read together where we were performing the opening scene. So she's incredibly pregnant and I was supposed to just be wearing a towel. Um, but we're in an audition room and uh, there I am kissing her neck and reciting these lines to a perfect stranger. And she got the role and I got the role. And we spoke after and we sat and had a meal and we were just kind of catching up and talking about what's to come. And what happened was we started this friendship where we were very communicative. Uh, we were very supportive. I remember saying to her, if you're not happy, I'm not happy. And there have been moments 
where she and I have been on set together and she has not been happy with the direction a scene is going or I haven't been happy with the direction a scene is going. This is, let's say, in rehearsals. But where we ultimately find ourselves is her saying, hey, Mai, what do you think? Or me saying, hey, man, what do you think? And we would always find our way together. And I think a lot of that was one, a dedication to this married couple that we both had, but also to over time, you develop a trust. And Mandy has always been for me on that set, a very safe place. If I'm ever frustrated or if I'm ever unsure, I know I can go to my partner. I can have a conversation about things with her. I could check in with her, even if I'm the only one feeling a certain way I'm like hey Mandy tell me if I'm off you know um, and she does the same with me which is nice I, I think it's rare that uh, two people in the trade of, of, uh, of acting can give so much of themselves to these characters and these roles but Mandy has given me 100% 100% of the time and I give her exactly the same you really saw them high five. Oh yeah you sure they weren't just like trying to smack each other in the face, like at the same time? No. You almost can't factor in what the audience is gonna think. You just have to be true to the character. Really honest, really truthful to who this man is. There have been moments where I don't agree with his actions personally. I would have handled things differently, but I'm sure there's things if he were real and he were looking at my life, he'd wonder why I made that decision. Jack himself, I think in those complexities and in those complications of life, make him very human and make him very relatable. I think if he were too true, too perfect, uh, he'd be unrealistic, he'd be unattainable. But I think because he has, and we see as an audience, moments where he is flawed, where he isn't making the right decisions, then I think we can actually aspire to be someone like him. That's what makes Jack attainable is, are his flaws. Because otherwise, he's the impossible. On our first date, she asked me about my time in Nam, And I lied to her. I told her I was just a mechanic. I think if anything, Jack might have hammered home a few ways that I live. In terms of just looking out for those around you, um, making sure people know that they're loved, making sure people know that they're supported, and just trying to be a, a good example of a good guy, which I think we definitely need. At the same time, being very masculine. I think there's a lot going on in the identity of men these days and making sure that we are getting away from a lot of toxicity, but it doesn't mean that we're any less of a masculine man than I think some of us were raised to be. That example of Jack is good, but in my mind, there's a pretty clear distinction between myself and Jack. I think Jack is very much a product of when he was born in the 40s. I was born in the 70s. I'm more of a modern, modern day guy. The hair, the makeup, the costumes, the set deck, the corduroy couches, everything that we put together for the eras that we bounce around on a majority of the time are what I grew up in as a kid. So there's a lot of magic and nostalgia for me. Putting me right into that headspace is another thing. You know, whatever I'm, how I'm physically dressed as Jack or how my hair and makeup is styled, that automatically snaps me right into where I need to be. Those are touchstones that I can play Jack when I'm in just my mustache. I know he's in his mid forties. I know he's got eight to 15 year old or eight to 14 year olds. And he's living a pretty good life. He's doing well in work. His marriage is great. Yes, he's got an alcohol problem on the rise, but he will deal with that when he hits goatee. <laughs> yeah, that kid, he's gonna grow up faster than we can handle. One day, he's gonna have it all figured out. I mean, how it's not like it's gonna wind up some 40-year-old man who can't stop talking about the Challenger explosion, right? As I'm reading the scripts, I'm starting to see loops close. 
it's very good place when you know you're given the runway to land the plane and i grateful for it i've also understood where let's say jack started and where he kind of hit a high point in episode or seasons 3 and then season 4 he kind of moved into this place of of being very supportive to other character storylines where we weren't learning so much about jack beyond that it was just jack's point of view in reference to kevin kate randall rebecca so i think as we are moving into the golden age the golden years of the show knowing that we're going to be coming to an end of it i think it's a, i very much have a sense of pride of what we've done of the stories we've told of the examples of relationships that we've had that hopefully again inspire people in real life to have further conversations with their loved ones or be bold or uh, be good to themselves and i feel for uh, the audience that is going to lose new episodes i do knowing what the stories are going to be as we are getting closer to the end and seeing those loops close it's they're very fulfilling very uh full-hearted episodes but i think they're going to be really emotional i think people are going to have a lot to feel with regards to the closing chapters of uh, the Pearson family. Right. Who's hungry? Me. Mm, I could eat. Okay. I'll get some started. No, no, it's okay. I got it. I'm just a working guy. I'm just a guy who shows up on set. I do the work. I've got a pretty big wild imagination. Uh, I look at my script, I look my castmates in the eye. I support my crew, make sure everybody's fed and just show up and do the work. So tacking virtuoso or anything um associated or even, you know, awards and statues to uh my name or performance kind of uh makes me a little uncomfortable. But I have been here for decades. It's been a long time uh, wearing makeup and reading lines that uh, a lot of wonderful writers have written. So my goal is always to pass that on. Pass that inspiration on to younger artists, um students of any trade, any craft, uh anyone who is coming up in Hollywood or who has been here for a long time that I would even consider a peer. Uh, what I try and do is just do the work and hopefully the work speaks for itself. and inspires other people to go out and uh do what they want in the creative field. <laughs>